Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this video, we are going to discuss the movie Showdown from MVD on Blu-ray via the MVD Rewind Collection. We're big fans of MVD Rewind here at Serial at Midnight. In fact, we've talked about so many of their releases in past videos. Some of their releases have ended up, let me find, yeah, Lionheart is such an amazing presentation with so many special features, alternate versions of the movie. This ended up on our best of the year list last year. Uh, and there are a couple of releases that are slated. We will see, I don't want to tip anything, but Double Impact is an equally stunning presentation. Um, frankly, their Blu-ray of Double Dragon, a movie that, it, look, we have a full review for this. We also have a full review for Lionheart, which I will put right here. But my point is they bring this unexpected level of attention and focus to movies you would not expect to get this level of attention or focus. That brings us to Showdown. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I had never heard of this movie before I, before I watched this Rewind Collection version. Um, the plot in summary, it's a 19, I think it was shot in 93, released in 94. But uh, it's, it's the Karate Kid in the 90s. The, the plot is this kid, he's kind of a small, uh, compact little kid. Not a little, he's a, he's a high school. So I think the guy in real life was like 25, but he's like, like Karate Kid, like Daniel, he's older than he looks. Um, he, uh, he goes to this new high school. He gets beat on by, like picked on by everybody. He falls for this girl played by Christine Taylor, who will always be Melody from Hey Dude to me. But Christine Taylor, of course, also from Zoolander, um, uh, Ben Stiller's significant other. And uh, she is the girlfriend of the big bad of the high school. He's like a jock. He's a kickboxer, basically. The, this movie puts Karate Kid and like Bloodsport in a blender. A kickboxer. The director directed uh, Best of the Best 1 and 2. So that's where he's coming from. So this kid is uh, like getting his butt kicked on a daily basis because he likes this girl and he's defiant. He's like, you don't tell me who to talk to. I'll talk to whoever I want to. She's pretty. And uh, what we find out is that the janitor is Billy Blanks, who Billy Blanks, the creator of Tai Bo, the 90s fitness sensation Tai Bo that combined martial arts with fitness. It was like these exercise teams. My mom had Tai Bo. My mom did Tai Bo in the living room. The 90s, man. Uh, Billy Blanks made a mint on Tai Bo. But before Tai Bo, he was in small, low-budget action movies like this one. I think he pops up in Lionheart for a scene. He's in things, but he's not. He's never like the focus. He's usually like a, a, a brawler, you know, a guy in the background that gets to fight somebody for 15 seconds. Uh, this was a big step up for him. This was one of his earlier, bigger roles. What we find out in the movie is that he was a cop, man, and he it, something went bad, and he accidentally killed somebody. <laughs> now we're bringing in Die Hard. <laughs> you see where we're going here, and. Um, he was just—he had to walk away from it all because it was just so tragic. He couldn't live with himself, so he goes to be the janitor at this school. So he—he he helps this kid. He's like, "Hey, man, you can't let people treat you like this. You got to self-respect. You got to—you got to respect who you are and make them respect you." So he starts doing this martial arts training, and it culminates out of nowhere. Almost, it culminates at this big like arena battle. It's not quite not quite blood sport. I don't think anybody's getting killed, but the big bad of the movie, the trainer of the uh, of the high school student, that's the the bully is Patrick Kilpatrick, who's in um, the Death Warrant. Is it Death Warrant with Jean-Claude Van Damme, the prison the prison one? Anyway, he's in he's in a lot of movies like this, too. He's a really, really good bad guy. So it's Patrick Kilpatrick. And um, they ended up, sta they staged this huge <laughs> fight in this arena, like Lionheart, like Bloodsport. And it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So it's this kind of like amalgamation. And when the dude takes, the, like the little guy, when he takes his shirt off at the end of the movie, it's like the most ripped you would, like, I can't believe how ripped this guy is. And then, like, listening to the special features, watching the special features, he was working out four times a day. So here's what I know about the movie. So the movie on its own, you're like, well, that was fun. It's not great, but it's a cool little time capsule of 1993 slash 1994. That's when I was in high school, so it kind of reminds me of my own high school experience, though my high school was not not as bad as the one presented in this movie. But uh, it's kind of a time capsule for me. But as I was saying at the beginning of this video, when you start to do the special features work on these, you realize the stories and you get, so the special features here, there's an hour, let me, let me be very specific. Um, so high definition Blu-ray of the movie, which looks fantastic. It looks so good. 
Uh, the Making of Showdown, a new feature-length documentary with the director Robert Radler of Best of the Best 1 and 2, writer Stuart Gibbs, and stars Billy Blanks, Ken Scott, John Asher, Patrick Kilpatrick, and Michael Genovese. 98 minutes long, you guys. The movie itself is 98 minutes. The Making of documentary is as long as the movie itself, but that's not even it. They're not even done. But I will say, watching The Making of documentary everybody's kind of aware of what they're doing. What I learned from this is that Ken Scott, this kid, the small guy who's Jack to the nines is, uh, he played, I think it was Raphael in the 1989 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. I think he revisited that character in future, um, Ninja Turtles sequels, but he went to Hollywood after Ninja Turtles to try to break into the business as a face actor and not, not inside a suit, but as a face actor. And this is one of the results of that. Billy Blanks, you know, looking for a bigger role. This is one of his earlier bigger roles. Uh, he's not a great actor. He knows he's not a great actor. That's the thing is that you get the honest inside perspective of what happened with this movie. This, the screenwriter saying they wanted Karate Kid. They wanted me to make this movie. And I was like, this is the Karate Kid. So if you're watching this thinking, this is Karate Kid. I wrote it. And yeah, it's Karate Kid. This is what they wanted me to do. I tried to change it as best as I could, but there's only so much, so much room that I had. You really get the inside story. So Ken Scott, they're talking about the movie, the star of the movie. He's like, I just, I realized when I was watching the movie that I'd let it down. I'm not a very good actor. I was so intense. I was overacting in scenes and some scenes I wasn't acting enough. I really failed this movie. You don't get that in a lot of major budget Hollywood making of featurettes. You just don't get that level of honesty. And that's what's so fascinating about these. Even the director, he's like, you know, I let so-and-so do this line and I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have done that. That might've been a bad idea. Super, super interesting stuff. And then, but it continues. So in addition to that 98 minute special feature, uh, there is a um, a 12 minutes, let's see, Robert Radler portrait of a director feature. And that's 12 minutes. That's the director talking about making the movies he'd made before, the music videos he made. Um, Billy Blanks, martial arts legend. That's 15 minutes. That's Billy Blanks basically, listen, he's older than I thought he was. He's in his late sixties now. I didn't realize that he was in his forties when the whole Tybo thing took off. So now he is, I think he's worth a pretty good chunk of change now, but he's in his late sixties. And it's just kind of interesting to see this guy approaching 70, looking back on his career, looking back on what he's accomplished, but still hungry for more. Cause he's all about, he's a martial artist. He's, I think he was a six time champion, uh, martial arts champion. And he really, um, that, that drive, that motivation, the discipline, he's, he's almost 70, approaching 70, but he's still going. He wants to get back into movies. It's really cool. It's actually kind of inspirational. And then here we go again, you guys, a 47 minute featurette on the fights of showdown. And that sounds like it could be dry. It sounds like it could be like B roll footage of like behind the scenes, like, okay, kick me up here. And, but it's not, it's more of the making of footage in a whole separate 47 minute documentary about the fights. And it's the actors talking about this person hit me. They weren't supposed to hit me, but they actually kidney punched me. <laughs> and oh, this person brought this racist, 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 <laughs> can't say that word, this racist element to their character that was not in the script and it really helped the movie. And they were like, they really tell the stories behind the scenes. The, 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 the lead guy, Ken Scott, talks about how he worked out four times a day to get into peak shape for this movie. And then as soon, they shot all of his shirt off scenes first. And as soon as they wrapped on his shirt off scenes, they went and ate like chicken wings and fries and drank beer. And I just think that like, that's, you're not going to get that anywhere else. This is just really, really cool stuff. So I don't know you guys, I was blown away by this as far as like the level of, again, again, okay movie, fantastic presentation. And once you watch these, you know, going into Double Dragon, like this is not, Double Dragon's not a good movie. And I think everybody knows it's a good movie, uh, not a good movie. Then you watch the special features. One of the producers, one of the writers worked on Breaking, like he went on to be a huge force of Breaking Bad. I think a producer of Breaking Bad. Um, one of them went on to direct movies and they're both like, yeah, this isn't the story we wrote. This is, this is how it got away from us. This is how the studio took it away. This is how the director took it away. And when you get the full story, 
you're like, oh, I now appreciate this movie for what it for what it actually is for the the story. Like I see how this went wrong, and I respect it more because of that. I respect the heck out of Showdown now. Never heard of it before, but now I'm like, oh, Showdown. I feel like I've been through something with these people. You guys have the extended editions of the Lord of the Rings that had the appendices on, and it was like, <laughs> it's like 146 hours of special features that were put together by Peter Jackson after like the making of the movies. They're way longer than the movies, and you feel like you've been on the journey with these actors. This kind of does the same thing. You really feel like you've been through the experience with these people. It's actually stunning. It's really, really cool what, what MVD is able to do with these to, to tell a story that could not be told at the time. Uh, really can only be told now, looking back in retrospect. There's also the anatomy of a scene, a seven-minute anatomy of a scene, original theatrical trailer, and uh, a photo gallery. One of the things that they do, so we have the, the slipcase with the VHS um, sort of um, the recreation of like a video store box with the stickers and stuff. But underneath on the actual disc, it's clean. So if that bothers you, you know, you can just toss out the toss out the slipcase. I know VHS slipcases really trigger some of you guys. We have a, a relatively simple and, and clean, I, I like it, uh, disc art. And then all of these MVD Rewind collection releases come with mini posters. I love a mini poster. I don't know what I'm ever going to do with these. Maybe one day, I think I've said this in a previous video, maybe one day we just plaster the walls with MVD mini posters from these releases. Lionheart, Double Dragon, uh, Double Impact. This would be really cool. But uh, this is out now. This has been out for months now, and I'm just getting around to reviewing it. But I, I do highly recommend it. I would also say um, this is not necessarily related to this, but last year, 2018, MVD won Black Friday. They came hard and they came early. And you were like, there were releases that were sub ten dollars. I think they were like six and seven dollar releases. It's been it's been a year, so I don't remember the exact prices. I was blown away because an MVD release. Uh, these have a higher retail price because of the work that goes into them. You can get them for 20 bucks all day long on the internet, but you're looking at uh, really good deals like 50, 75% off on some of these releases. So I would just say I have no inside knowledge. I only am basing this on last year's Black Friday, but as I'm making this video, Black Friday's coming up. I would keep my eyes peeled to MVD. Um, the rewind collection and their you know they do other things besides the rewind collection so i would keep my eyes peeled to that but guys thanks for hanging out talking about some mvd rewind collection take care and until next time i will catch you later <laughs>